This is the April 2nd meeting of the Monroe County Board of Elections. Uh, and I, I would like to call the meeting to order. Um, could we have uh, an approval of the outstanding minutes from the previous meeting? I don't believe we actually have minutes from the last meeting, at least not that I could find. Okay. So we should be up to date. Can I make a motion to table that until next month's meeting? Please do. I will second. Aye. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, probably since some of us are working on the phone, we should also state our name when we vote, just for the record. Um, this meeting is being recorded by CATS, so everyone should be aware that um, uh, we are going to be on video and audio on uh, CATS as soon as this is done, or as soon as they get it posted. Um, preparations for the 2020 primary election. Um, Karen, could you speak to us about the recruitment of volunteers and training? Okay, we have, oh, this is Karen. Okay, and, now you see the window. Okay, and so our re recruiting has started. We've been working on that. The office has done a, a good chunk of it. Of course, at this point, we're having great difficulty in knowing what's really going to happen. Are we really going to have early voting? You're actually talking about recruiting for election data. Um, so it is moving forward. Okay. Um, there's people that are hesitant, of course, to commit to this because of what's going on. So um, I, I know that other organizations have been able to recruit from people who unfortunately were laid off or lost their jobs. Um, and that, that has, um, has been a, a fertile ground for recruitment. So that might be another area we can consider. Actually, some of the Republicans on early voting have indicated that they would be willing to work for early voting. Okay. But the semantics of having early voting is just so difficult. How do you keep six feet apart? And how do we keep our workers safe? How do we keep our voters safe? It's just pretty mind boggling. It is, it is. Um, and in a few minutes, we're gonna talk about the, uh, what the state has allowed us to do. Um, but, um, I, how would you say the recruitment is going, given that we have a primary election on June 2nd? When my staff had the job of recruiting, it was going extremely well. As at this point, I have a Democratic and a Republican recruiter that's doing it from their home. And I, it's been a little bit harder to get communication with us. So I really don't know how they have done. We were, we were doing a really good job, but I know it's easier at the beginning than it is when you're trying to fill up the spaces. They have not um, let me know what they're, what's really going on at this point. And I think they're just kind of confused too of what are we really going to be doing? Right. Um, I think we have every, every expectation of, of having as normal a vote as possible, given the circumstances. Um, by June 2nd, uh, we'll, we'll be a month past the, uh, um, the, um, the government stated shutdown or stay at home. Uh, that should be a month behind us by the time the election comes up. We'll have to see because if conditions don't merit it, then that'll be extended and we'll have to go to plan B, whatever that is. But, and with um, that recruitment, you know, we're yeah. also concerned about right now the polling locations are pretty much all concerned about being a polling location. Exactly. And 
So we have you know, churches and schools and fire stations all that are not really sure that they want to move forward. Plus, the, um, you know, Meadowood. So everyone's on edge and everyone's not willing to commit or say too much because they just don't know what they're getting into, which is understandable. One of the uh, mandates by the IEC was that we can further consolidate um, polling locations, precincts into polling locations. Are we working on a contingency plan that might allow us to use fewer polling stations? With what the state has said, we could get down to four because we can do one satellite for every 25,000 registered voters. But of course, it would have to be a place that could accommodate that. And Election Central could be one. And Ivy Tech has suggested that they might be able to do that. And we also could run one out of showers. So that would be three. We have 96,000 registered voters. So four would accommodate. I've talked to IU and they're not willing to commit to that, but it is a possibility. If they're still shut down due to, they're just not opening up because of the end of the school year and all, um, but they are discussing it. Now I know location is not best. We're not hitting Clear Creek and we're not hitting Washington and we're not hitting Ellettsville in that area. And I know there's gonna be some concern about that for voters that are not, this is all really pretty central here in the Correct. city. And I'm not saying that we should necessarily go down to four, but we could certainly go down from 34 to a lesser number, which would both reduce our need for recruiting extra poll workers um, but, um, you know, and, and also just help keep that from being so much of a problem. So that's something that developing a contingency plan that would both cover the county and, uh, reduce those needs. Um, and given that hopefully people are voting by mail, that might be enough. Yeah. Um, it's going to be very important that the media helps us to get the message out about people being able to vote from home and the, the process that's required to do that, where they must request a form that they fill out, which will in turn request that they be sent a ballot. Um, people can, uh, organizations can pass out the form to request a ballot. Um, a, uh, an absentee ballot by mail, but um, it's my understanding that, that organizations cannot pass out the ballots themselves. This is correct. Um, but for example, this is Carolyn again, the, the Democratic Party will have something in their newsletter this week um, about the process, about the fact that anybody now is entitled to vote by mail without excuse for this primary only. Um, and the places to send it. And one of the other issues is that apparently everybody's getting online and finding my address and sending me their absentee ballot requests. Um, so make yeah, sure that we have those uh, addresses out there. I mean, I can forward them on, but it's a lot easier if they do it directly. Yep. I've, I've had a few of those calls and requests myself. Yep. Um, this is Nicole, as have I, and I would like to just note that I, on numerous occasions, copy the Herald Times with uh, information about absentee voting by mail and the fact that um, we are incredibly fortunate to have it be no excuse for this primary, and we're not guaranteed to have that going forward, so I'm trying to get the word out to as many people as possible via the media so that we That's can great. have that. And I too get the forwards and send them on. Karen probably gets several of those from me per week with that. So yep. we're all in the same boat on that. Exactly. Um, one thing I would suggest, there's a, some issues with the Monroe County websites. Uh, I think one of them still lists me as being the chair when I'm not. Um, and none of them seem to have prominently both the information and where to send things. Um, Nicole, you might 
edit your your press list where you've given people the location to get the application, but we might also tell them where to send it. So that if, uh, I mean, the only one that I've seen that really is uh, fully up to date is the voter portal one, um, the homepage on our, on our voter portal um, that has all that information. But for example, the Monroe County websites uh, that have the clerk's office and have uh, voter registration don't have that information on them. So getting that onto those websites, if they can be corrected um, from a distance, uh, would probably be helpful to voters. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we should uh, possibly at this point repeat that we're seeking paid volunteer positions and the pay is approximately $125 up to $165 per day. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So that, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Um, and I, I would encourage people to, to remind potential volunteers that this is a paid position. Um, consider it hazard pay or whatever. Um, and we might even be able to throw in a couple pairs of rubber gloves. I, hopefully by the time of the election, um, this will be calmed down substantially and, uh, and we'll be in a little better position than we are today. But there's no telling with this. It uh, looks like uh, uh, our friends in China might be having a second go around as well. Um, all right. A any other information or discussion on the recruitment of volunteers, Karen, or anyone else? Uh, no, but I did want to, Karen, and I did want to say I just went on our our website, which is MonroeCountyVoters.us, and it's really clear. The front page it says, if you want to vote by mail, click here, mail it into you know voter registration or. And we also have the form there with the no excuse um, and also for registration. It's all right there as soon as you open it up. So we've been working on that website. So I'm not for sure what Carolyn saw. Well, this is there, there. there are other websites through Monroe County government that talk about the election office that don't have that information on it. As I said, our one is correct, but there aren't other places where that is. For example, um, Nicole sent out a press release, which is on the front page of something. Um, it has the address to download the form on it, but it doesn't tell people where to send them. And so anytime we're putting any of that information out, we should put the email address and the mailing address with that information so that, that voters aren't confused because that's where they are. And I will tell you that most of the voters who seem to be Googling this are ending up somewhere else or at least the ones that I'm hearing from are getting another page that doesn't have that information on it. So that might be something no. to work on. Miss Carolyn, this is Nicole. Please know that going forward, certainly anything that I can control will go out with the right information. You can imagine that there might be other websites out there that people have access from years past that we didn't create nor were we a party to, but they still have old information on there. We can control what we can control and going forward, I will make sure that anything that comes from my office has the appropriate information. Also, Mr. Hal, I want to address um, what you said as far as precautions. Um, I don't remember if I said this at last month's meeting, but uh, just prior to everything um, kind of going haywire. My office was actively engaged in trying to get precautionary um, supplies. We were, we were even willing to pay those outrageous prices and get a hold of hand sanitizer, standalone stands so that people could access the sanitizer, um, the disinfecting wipes and things like that. Um, some of our orders unfortunately were rescinded. Um, if you read the news, it seems like there are other places that bid higher, buy it out from under you. But we now have some 
businesses out in the community who have stepped up and are offering us hand sanitizer. Um, I'm not able to call all of those by name, but I am trying to get those names because I want those businesses to be acknowledged for their Herculean efforts to help us have a successful election. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of some of those um, other organizations in the community that um, have clients uh, who must be um, uh, maintained throughout this uh, extraordinary time have been able to get help from uh, several different organizations in the area to get hand sanitizer. Um, we call it home brewed hand sanitizer. And uh, we're very appreciative of those organizations for their help. Karen, you had something to say? No, I'm sorry. Someone just came in and um, okay. so it was a little different. My apologies. Okay. I, I um, get one more thing, Hal, but just before yes. we finish that we should probably give the, that information out to the public. So the uh, address to send your ballot application to is election at co.monroe.in.us, that's the email address. And the mailing address is voter registration, 401 West 7th Street, Suite 100, Bloomington, Indiana, 47404. Um, and those are the best places to get your application to vote by mail to, that's the fastest way we're gonna get those ballots out to people. All right, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, any other information or comments about the recruitment of volunteers? All right, Karen. Uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Eric Evans. Um, you had your hand up. Did you have uh, something you wanted to state? Yes, thanks. I just wanted to address something that uh, Carolyn asked a couple minutes ago with regards to uh, updating the county website. Um, if there are update, updates that need to be done to the county website, Rita Bush, who is the tech services uh, web person, is fully operational at home. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have the staffing to update uh, the site yourself, just send what you want uh, via email to Rita at rbush, so that's R-B-U-S-H, at co.monroe.in.us and she'd be happy to get things updated for you. Thanks, Eric. That's very helpful. Yep. Thank you, Eric. All right. Um, any other information on recruitment of volunteers? No. Okay. We'll move on to the new election calendar. Um, we'll move on to the new election calendar. Uh, Karen? Yes, yes. What would you like to know? Um, would you like to say a few words about the revised election calendar? Sure. Every deadline that we have has been changed in reflecting the June 2nd election day. So everything basically moves back or forward um, pretty much like the 28 days, kind of how it is. So a couple of important dates is voter registration ends May 4th. And that means, of course, we any registrations up to that point, and that includes anything that we receive up to 11.59 on Monday, May 4th. And another important one is May 21st. That is our last day to receive an absentee ballot application from a voter. So again, we're promoting the mail ballots tremendously but we just need them by that time. And of course, we don't want a bunch on that day. Anytime that somebody wants it, we want them to get it in and process so we can get that ballot back to them as fast as possible. Those are probably two of the big dates that are important. Um, so if you need that calendar, it's also on the Secretary of State. And I believe it's on our Monroe County voters MonroeCountyVoters.us. I think we put the calendar out there too. I think I saw it. I'm not sure. You did see it. I think so, but I, I there's other things out there that I may not that I might have missed. So I know it, it gets I've pretty hard. It from about 20 different places. So um, 
and you think you've done it all, and then now you have to redo it all. And it's like, how did you, do you remember what you've done the first time or the second time or another change in between? So, but if anybody wants that calendar, they can just request it for me too, and I will email them that very quickly. I have it ready to go. Also to, um, just to, to update that. So the 21st, the deadline is 1159. However, um, to be more specific, it's by close of day at the office. If you are bringing it in, if the office is open by then, which we hope it will be, um, and it must be received in the mail that day. It can't be delivered the next day. Um, if you email or fax your ballot application, the deadline is 1159, but there's no guarantee that your email timestamp say that. That is correct. Randy? Um, and while we're talking about the election calendar, yes, I'll, I'll yes, make sure. Sorry, yeah, Randy? I'm, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. I, I wasn't able to get to figure out how to get your attention when you were talking previously. If I could just make a couple comments. Uh huh. You know, as far as I listened to the state election commission meeting last month, and in that order that they passed, they did mention accessibility on any new sites that you pick to try to accommodate. Uh, when I hear that different sites may be picked and we may be lowering the number, it makes sense to me, but. I was involved in uh, the Help America Vote Act years ago, and I took it took almost five years to get polling sites accessible. I just want to remind um, the group that when you're looking at new sites, if you could pay attention to this, the accessibility of those sites. Absolutely. And the yeah. requirement, and the requirement typically has been, my experience was people would look at a site, and if a wheelchair could get through a door, it was considered compliant with the Help America Vote Act, and in fact. There's a 13 page checkoff to make sure that a site is accessible, not only for someone in a wheelchair, but someone who is visually impaired. There's a lot that goes into accessibility. And I'd like to at least forward to somebody that checklist so you have it in front of you when you're looking at a site. Nicole uh, and Karen both are very aware of those check sites and or that checklist. And that's part of what we would be looking at. Well, the reason I bring it up is that I stopped working on it in 2012 because pretty much all the sites were accessible. Now I'm seeing some of the sites that we did not approve are being used. The Indiana Memorial Union being one. And that was probably the worst site that we inspected back in 2012. So I understand everybody knows about it. I'm not sure everybody's always uh, very vigilant about it. And that, I just want to remind people it's important for a lot of people that those sites be accessible. The other point is that the major news outlets we're reporting today that this virus is actually surviving and can be transmitted in the air. And so you could walk into a room and they're saying that it can stay alive for as long as two hours. With that in mind, I, I really don't see how you can run an election this year without it simply being by mail. I think the risk you're putting to poll workers, to the public, and obviously the chance of spreading this virus like crazy in this community if we have an election. So I know that's a tough call, but I think sometimes in a crisis, Make the tough call. Just announce that we're going to have only vote by mail. You know, the candidates are going door to door campaigning. They can spread the word. I think you can get the word out. But even if you don't get it to 100 percent of the people, public safety, I would think, would dictate that you not have an election in a traditional way and just do a vote by mail. Well, we understand that, Randy. The problem is that it's not our decision to make. Um, we are trying to get everybody to vote by mail as much as possible. Um, and it's possible that the Indiana Election Division, when they meet on the 22nd, is going to make that call, but we can't do that. So we have to plan both ways, at least at the moment. Understood. Yeah. Uh, we'll continue to encourage voting by mail as much as we can. Uh, but people have to read between the lines between now and the 22nd when the uh, State Commission has its meeting. Now, before we move on, I wanted to make one more additional comment sure. about the election calendar, and that's for all the candidates out there. Um, the primary has moved, and therefore the campaign finance reporting periods have also moved. So the new end of pre-primary campaign finance reporting period is May 8th, um, the start of the 10-day uh, window for um, 
filing a CFA 11 would start May 9th. And the deadline now for filing your pre-primary campaign finance reports will be on the 15th of May. So everybody needs to know that, that those dates have also been extended and that's when they need to file their reports, uh, but they still need to file them. All right, thank you, Carolyn. Um, are there any other um, issues or concerns regarding the 2020 primary that need to be brought up in front of the board at this time? I think we'll have a lot more information after the 22nd, at least that's the hope. Yeah, I think you're right. And we're still seeing daily um, executive orders coming from the governor's office, which could affect this as well. So um, I would expect we'll probably see something from his office before we get to the 22nd. So we'll have a pretty good idea which direction we need to go. Um, we did get a question from Ernest Rollins at the HT okay. uh, it kind of fits yep. in here too, which is after I receive a ballot by mail, what's the deadline for getting those ballots back to the election office so they can count? Can you comment on that, Karen? Okay. So getting the ballots back. Um, yeah, that is on the state website yeah. at uh, ion.gov slash SOS slash election. There is a, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, this is Nicole. If I am not mistaken, it is 12 days prior to the election that will- It's not, we not the applications. It. Oh, I'm sorry. It's when, when do the ballots have to be received for them to be valid? And that's on primary election day, is that not correct? Correct. It, it, would, yeah. it would have to be in the mail on that day to be counted. Yeah, I I oh, have I, I have the exact it's wording exactly. that's posted it's on the state site. It says exactly. all all voters may choose to cast a ballot by mail in the upcoming June second primary election to request an absentee by mail ballot. Please complete this form, ABS mail primary twenty twenty, and return it to your county election officials. The deadline to return the form is May twenty first by eleven fifty nine p.m. local time. That's the ballot application. That's Ernest the ballot request. application. Yes, but Ernest's request is yes. or question is Ernest. Uh, his question is, when do the ballots have to be returned yep. in order to be valid? And that is by the end, that by is. the close of polls on election day, correct? Yes. No, 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 no. I believe it's Monday, June 1st at noon. Oh, Monday at noon. noon. Okay, so it's the last day to receive absentee ballots of any kind. Is then that deadline is noon on the uh, June 1st. It says um, noon for a voter to vote an absentee ballot in person at the office of the circuit court clerk or satellite office. But that's in person. What about by mail? I looked too, and it doesn't. There's no deadline listed on the election calendar for actual by when the ballots have to be in by mail. So we may need to to get that elucidated. Um, we we do. I think that is noon on election day. We do have, this is Nicole, we do check the mail at the post office and what we receive from the, our post, um, our postman on election day. So mail does come into election central while we are all there on election day and a ballot that has been received is processed by a bipartisan team at election central on that date. Thank you. Right. Okay. So it would, you, be, it would be essentially by close of, of the polls uh, on election day, they could bring it to election central or it needs to be in the mail on that day. Is that, that what I'm hearing, Nicole? Yes, ma'am. All right. I think we always aim more for a noon though. That's getting it pretty close. If, if they're well, thinking they're going to bring it at six o'clock. We always tell people not to wait until six o'clock, but technically if they came in and it's 5.59 that day, we would process that ballot. If they show up after that, or if it arrives in the mail on the third, that ballot has to be discarded. Okay. 
one of the things, this is Nicole, one of the things that the public doesn't see that, of course, you and I all, you know, take for granted is that pretty much we are all together on Election Day. So the Monroe, the Monroe County voting community can rest assured that if something comes in that needs to be addressed, we are in session working together to see and we there we always the three of us always err on the side of the voters intent in an effort to get that ballot in counted and in processed and counted at 601 on election night so um certainly all of these questions will be resolved as we get more information we are in limbo like many of the voters waiting for the Indiana Election Commission to give us further direction, but we will all err on the side of voter intent and processing a ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And we, we also, just to clarify, don't discard any ballots. We have to keep them for like 22 months, even if they came in late. So just to say. Sorry, yes, the, the, it should say that it will not be counted, but it is obviously stored. Right. Right. Okay. Any additional issues concerning the 2020 primary? Mr. Hal, if I can just say one thing, because I received yes. information while we've been in this meeting. Um, when you go to the Monroe County government website, it, it, it does come up about uh, requesting a vote by mail and the form is on the Monroe County website as well. Thank you. But does it say where to send that ballot uh, or that application once it's been received? Because that's the issue. People know where to get the ballot application. They just don't know where to send it. So anywhere that has that link to the ballot application should also have where to send it. All right. Any, other, any other issues regarding the primary? All right. Let's... Um, Let's move on to the next issue. Um, Karen, did we receive um, a check from Allison Chopra? We did. I got $50 okay. from her. Great. All right. Um, I would also mention that I spoke with um, Steve Olin at another event before we were social distancing, and he did indicate that he had paid his fine as well. All right. That's great. Thank you. Um, in regard to polling sites for the 2020 election under old business, um, we had a request um, for um, the Ellettsville, um, or Edgewood um, School and uh, the uh, supervisor of the Richmond Bean Blossom Board of Education. Um, have both requested the ability to speak to the board and I offer them uh, an opportunity to do so at this time. So feel free to unmute yourselves and... Um, you know. Hello, uh, this is Jerry Sanders. I'm the superintendent at Richland Bean Blossom, a community school corporation. I have Dirk Ackerman, who is the principal at Edgewood High School here with me. Uh, first, before we get started, just want to thank you for uh, your hard work. I know these uh, decisions are are very difficult and, and troubling times, so we appreciate uh, your efforts. Uh, we uh, just come to you today with uh, a, a proposal, a continuation uh, of, a, of your consideration to uh, move the election site from Edgewood uh, High School to the Elfield Town Hall. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ackerman and he's going to go over some more details of that proposal. Uh, as I uh, presented to you, I believe it was in December of 2018, um, we become further uh, concerned about safety issues with the election being at the school, uh, with the school open. Uh, we are the only school in the Richland Bean Blossom Township uh, that our school district that has elections. So uh, we're kind of unique. We're not like MCC, which I believe use several schools. Um, so um, it is a safety issue. It's also an issue uh, with uh, just accommodating uh, 
people at the school that day with the bus. We have a bus lot that is right there on the same side of the building. Um, also, uh, other counties, and th this has actually happened since I presented to you in December of 2018, other counties across the state are actually making a de very deliberate move to move election sites out of schools right now. So uh, I'm not asking anything more. We're not asking anything more than what other election boards in other counties are making a move to do for safety issues as well. Um, the uh, town, I've spoken to the town of Ellettsville. Uh, they said that they actually have uh, requested to have the election at the town hall. Uh, parking would be very similar. Uh, handicap accessibility would be uh, the same, that's a two-year-old building, so it's definitely uh, handicap accessible. Um, so again, we're just uh, asking that we consider this move. Uh, when I spoke to Mr. Turner uh, about this uh, through email, uh, I understand the tight timeline for the May election and um, am not requesting that for the primary election. And now that it, it's in June, our biggest concern is uh, the actual the, the COVID-19 virus and opening up the building to that many people. Uh, if the governor has not opened schools up at that point, uh, other than that, it would actually work at Edgewood High School. We don't have students in the building or we have limited students in the building for different activities uh, and parking would not be an issue at all. So uh, I think that barring the governor not opening up schools at all, uh, past June 2nd, that would not be an issue, but we are making this request for the uh, election in November, uh, asking that the board uh, consider this for the November election. Right. Uh, Randy, you had a comment. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep. I don't want to keep harping on this, but I'm going to have to. This is the Help America Vote Act again. and. I'm getting more concerned the more conversations I'm hearing because back in 2012, the decision was made that most schools were horrible as far as accessibility because one of the main portions of that survey is that there's a 200 foot limit as far as from somebody parking to getting into the building. And when school buses are coming during the school year, that's almost impossible. And oftentimes the parking for the public is, is well away from the school because you don't want cars running around driving when there's kids out. So when I hear that school is a possibility, I'm questioning whether people really do understand the Help America Vote Act. And when I hear people say, yeah, we've got the survey, we understand it. That's what I heard in 2012. And my question would be, if everybody understands it, why is the Indiana Memorial Union being used as a site when it clearly doesn't pass the Help America Vote Act? So again, what I'm hearing is what I heard in 2012 is, yeah, Randy, we understand it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. But when I start hearing conversations and I start seeing sites that are not compliant, I'm a little concerned. Uh, let me comment a little bit on the union. So things have changed significantly back there since you um, looked at that in 2012. That back parking lot is now completely accessible parking. There's no general parking back there. Oh, I've been to the union We've, since 2012, I assure you. I know that building, the union, that but the, the there, there is that no, building, that, that parking building, lot is completely accessible now. There is no general parking back there. I'm so not talking about the parking lot. There are 52 different criteria. Parking lot is one of them. And we've you looked at all get, of them. You can't look, you can hardly get into the building. And then go on the first floor. I don't know where you're going to put your site. If it's on the first floor or the second floor, try to get in a, a, a wheelchair in an elevator. First of all, there is a direct access into the uh, room in which we do. It's right in front of the door. And which room is that? There. Which there's room is that? There's also an accessible door. It's at the university club. You can't get in the university club within 200 feet of parking. You're not even close. The parking lot across the street is within 200 feet. But not to that room, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. The I've been there. It's right inside the door. You can't get there from there. You can't, I'm not gonna argue with you online on a building I've been through a dozen times and I know more about the Help America Vote Act than I think than most people do. You've got to picture the fact of somebody in a walker. You got to picture the fact of voters who, one voter I always met when I was working at polls was on a walker with an oxygen tank. And when you park your car, you're supposed to be within 200 feet of the polling 
of the polo site and you cannot get into the IMU within 200 feet, I don't care where you park or where you put that bowling site. And when you're talking about schools, you guys shouldn't even be talking about schools. It shouldn't be on the list. It was agreed to in 2012 they wouldn't be on the list. And I was afraid that after time went by and people weren't as diligent about it, is that this is going to happen, is that sites were going to slowly be brought back in that are not compliant. Now I can go and make We're a formal request. Review the sites for this particular election. So let's discuss it at another election. We can actually. Actually, what I would like, what I would like, to, what I would like to do is make a formal proposal to the board right now that you do another Help America Build Act check. That you go out and you inspect every site you're going to use, and you do it for this election. Uh, I think we have other things right now that we're going to worry about. We will take that under consideration. And that's what I heard in 2012. I want to remind you, the Help America Vote Act is the law. It's not a choice, and it's not when it's convenient for you. It is Randy, the law. I'm not going to argue with you about this at this meeting. It's not on the agenda. We'll talk about it at another meeting. Right now, we have more important things that we've got to deal with, dealing with this virus and how we're going to run this election. Problem is, it's never on the agenda. That's up to the chair, and I'm sure he will put it on the agenda. But right now, we're not going to have we this argument. No. We, we will um, address this issue, readdress the issue uh, of accessibility voting at all sites. Right? And it will be part of future agendas. Um, Randy, um, could you? Please copy me on the information that you referenced. Um, and you sure. can reach me at halturner12 at gmail. Yeah, I've got your email. Okay. And well. Randy, this is Nicole Brown. Um, you have been so incredibly helpful to me on other um, matters with respect to my office. When this craziness has passed, I would be honored to have lunch with you to better understand what you went through in 2012 um, to help inform decisions that we have to make. So um, I'm certainly open to being re-educated on um, the issues that concern you at this time. Okay, and, thanks. And since um, I am actively involved in at least uh, two organizations that are highly concerned about this issue. I would also like to be re-educated on it. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, next agenda item. I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. We're still. Yeah, we're still still talking about the uh, the Edgewood facility for the fall. Thank you. This this is Dirk Ackerman again. Yes. Um, yeah, so we're, 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 again, wanting to cooperate. Um, and Randy brought up some issues that are very true, that when we do have a school day and we have buses, uh, it is a major issue in our back parking lot. Again, that's the bus lot right there. Um, so again, we're just requesting that we move the election uh, for November. I also know that the, uh, I've spoken to the town hall, uh, I kind of made that proposal without knowing, but since then I have spoken to them and they said they have specifically requested uh, to have the election at the town hall. They're not open on that day. They have as many parking spots. They are definitely handicapped accessible. So I assume that uh, we could discuss not having the November election uh, or that the June election be the last one at Edgewood High School. Mr. Ackerman, this is Nicole Brown. Um, I just want to ask, um, in the spirit of compromise, because typically the building that you have in the primary is also used in the general, are you open to any type of compromise for an e-learning day that day? Because that would address a couple of issues, not only um, the school not being open and making it available to us for election day, but our need for poll workers and your very talented teachers and students being available to work for us on election day and get some e-learning credit. Um, Nicole, uh, number one, if we have an e-learning day, then students nor teachers would be available. Uh, they have to be on, on e-learning. They're required to be a, a teaching at that time. And we do have a lot of students that help with the election. Uh, I sign all those uh, pre-requests uh, pre, pre for absences 
And so we do have a lot of students do it. And I, I encourage that. Um, I was a member of Young Democrats when I was, I should have said that, of a political party when I was a kid. Um, and um, so I definitely encourage kids to be involved. I, I don't think we have enough adults that vote. And I think that they need to learn to be involved as kids. And, and hopefully we can encourage more. So that would not be an option. We also have the other three schools that uh, the election is not held at the other three schools. So again, the safety issues um, and the issues with expression, I, I see this as being a very, very big election in November. I, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I really think that you're gonna have a very good turnout this year in November. And um, the second uh, request that I would make is that I came to you in December of 2018 and made this request um, and did not hear back from you. And um, so I think that, you know, going through the 19 election, well, there wasn't one, but I've given time for you to consider this. And I feel like that that, that consideration maybe hasn't been uh, given uh, ample uh, discussion. All right. I, I would uh, like to suggest that the election board have a um, some further study done on this because I don't understand all the issues being the new kid here. Um, I would like to then have the board uh, have it a public um, discussion and a public vote about doing this um, for the fall election. Um. This is Carolyn again. So I would point out that we did have this discussion. And in fact, I was very much in favor of moving to the town hall in that discussion. But it was voted on by the election board to not do so because of other concerns about safety. Um, and I'm certainly open to revisiting that. I personally think the town hall is a good location. OK. Um, can, now, I, can I have a motion? from the board that we uh, have uh, a study of the issues related to voting at the Edgewood School and that we um, are able to examine the issues related to voting at the, the City Hall. I don't believe we need a motion. You just need to put it on the agenda. Okay, then, then so it shall be. Can, um, can I make this is Dirk Ackerman again? Can yes. I make a re, can I make a request to uh, be a part of that um, discussion and and to contribute in any way I can, uh, and and then also possibly even if we sat down with uh, the town council as a part of that, I would be glad to come to a meeting, uh, either virtually <laughs> or uh, um, in person if that's appropriate at the time. Okay, and I know the town hall would be as well. Okay. Um, according to state law, the election board uh, can only meet in a public meeting. And uh, so this will have to be advertised at least 20, uh, 48 hours in advance. And um, the public will be allowed to participate with comments either in person or electronically. Okay. What Thank you. The... I really appreciate your consideration. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, Dirk, one of the things we might consider doing is, um, once social distancing again is gone, is doing a second site visit to town hall. We could hold a meeting there. We just need to notice it uh, properly for the open door meetings. Okay, thank you. That's a good idea. The only other thing that I wanna say before you wrap this up, Mr. President, is that um, I don't want, if we happen to not be in agreement as far as whether or not Edgewood serves as a polling site, I don't want that to be construed as your voice not being heard. Um, that's kind of the takeaway that I felt when I saw some of the co correspondence that went across between um, the election board members. Your, your concerns have been heard. Can I speak again? Yes. This is Randy Paul again. Go ahead, Randy. Again, 
Um, I'm just I'm getting more and more frustrated the longer this conversation goes. You've got a choice in front of you of a site, the school that does not comply with the Help America Vote Act. You've got a site at Town Hall that does. I don't know. What are you going to meet about whether you want to follow the law or not follow the law? You've got a clear choice here, an easy choice. I'm, I think my voice isn't being heard when we have all this discussion. You've got one site that doesn't comply to election law, and you've got another site that does, and you want to meet about it? Since when do you meet about following the law? Just make the decision to move to town hall. We have to, okay. Uh, I personally am not familiar with the, each of those facilities and I need to be able to understand clearly why the school is not sufficient and why the town hall is according to the criteria that you're gonna send me. And it, once I read that, and once I understand that it is not in compliance, then then uh, my vote will be according to the law. Fair enough. Hi, All right. this, is, this is Dirk Ackerman again. I, I just would like to be able to respond to Nicole's, um, I think she's referring to an email that I had sent um, that may be true, um, Nicole, but uh, there was absolutely no tra uh, transparency because I received no information whatsoever. Um, so maybe I was heard, um, but I would have expected some type of communication, uh, some type of correspondence. Um, and so that's really what I was referring to in that email. Thank you. Okay. So um, we will then be calling a future meeting um, specifically to discuss this issue. It will be an agenda item. Um, next, um, did we adequately cover the IMU PACE testing? They, there's nobody in their office, so no. Um, we need to postpone that. Okay, very good. That, that will be open on the next uh, meeting's agenda. Uh, are we concluded with old business? Is there any other old business to be brought before the board? Not that I have, Nicole. Okay, Nicole? I have none. Okay, thank you. Then we'll proceed to new business. Um, Uh, we've already reviewed the new dates uh, for all election requirements. Um, we are still faced with exceptional voting circumstances. Um, there may be um, additional information coming out on the 22nd of May. Pending that time, um, I would ask that, that the board uh, remain in session uh, yeah. at the call of the chair. I'm happy Agreed. with staying in session. Okay. Uh, this will allow us to, yeah, but, um, but yeah. we can, um, not adjourn. Right. This, this does not obviate any, uh, of the other legal requirements we're bound by. It simply gives us, uh, the ability to be a, to be a little fleet of a fleeter of foot, I guess. Um, is there anything else to be brought before the board at this time? No, um, again, I'll mention that the Indiana Election Division is meeting on the 22nd of April. That's their next meeting. Yep. There may be a lot more information after that, including they may make the decision to go to an all-male uh, okay. election, but they, until they've done so, we're going to have to think about ways of dealing with how to deal with having in-person and uh, travel board um, yep. uh, absentee voting as well as by mail. Yep. And uh, there being no other business, then I uh, will okay. suspend these proceedings. Karen, did you have something um, you wanted to say? It is the Indiana Election Commission that's actually meeting on the second, 22nd. Sorry, commission, not, not division. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. And so I will make a motion to recess instead of adjourn. Okay. Um, these proceedings are recessed uh, by my vote. Carolyn? Uh, that's fine with me. Um, I would like to thank um, Eric for setting this up for us and also Katz 
uh, for recording it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, so we are recessed, subject to the call of the chair. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you.